was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. I feel like we're a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. <laughs>
with the brother's blood. Is there the train now? It's the heavens. Do what it fight. And snow will all is back. It wasn't nice for me at first, but afterwards I wanted to smoke every day. And afterwards, I went on for four years until I came to the 6th of June when they sent me to a rehabilitation center in Eastriver. And that's when I decided that I'm going to stop, but I still struggle a bit. Making me steal. Does I respect my mother? People around me didn't listen to them, no respect. And when I come to the school, so I realized what did they do to my mother and my father. So that they didn't want me at home when I did drugs and that, so it saved me away. When I come to the school and I realized what goes for what, and so I did fall my water one day and so I said, tell me I can come out. I will be your father. Come to Papa. Come. Turn him off! The storyline of this play Hamlet, which is essentially about a son who loses his father, whose uncle is in an incestuous relationship with, uh, with, his, uh, with his mother, are themes which are not far away from home. And I think what this world does, it encourages a heightened state of internal communication. Because in an incarcerated space, it's very difficult for, for young men, in this case, for example, to come to terms emotionally with the kind of sets of circumstances that they faced and the kind of circumstances that they've been brought into. I've grown up lying every day when I was, at least I was seven until 11. I was beaten up. I was, I, whenever my aunt came home, she used to eat me. But anything that comes in the way, I just don't still listen. I just keep on lying, carrying on, no, uh, carrying on with nonsense. And at the end of the day, I still get beaten up. I also didn't have people that I can trust and talk to about it. And I'm off. I wasn't a person that could talk about my problems. I kept it in and once I got angry about something, then I go use it. Then I go use drugs to make my feeling go away. But only that moment when the drug is still in your system, then it makes your problems go away, but your problems come again back. So I decided to face my problems and to run away from it. People learn a lot of things here, and a person always gets us in this part here, a person gets another second chance, you can say. And it's very tough outside for me because there's a lot of challenges that a person has to face. There's a lot of challenges outside, and you're with your old friends, and you know your friends are, when there's always peer pressure involved. So, your friends force you sometimes to do stuff that you don't enjoy, but if you're inside, we go a lot out. 
And yeah, we enjoy the day because we get a lot of time to ourselves here. For me, wow, I'm a king. You see, I like it. It's, it's feel like it's real to me, you see. And when I'm walking in, it's like I'm a real king. I mustn't touch the ground with my foot. I, I walk in the chairs. The soldiers must come, put the chairs for me until the end of the, of the stage. And I stand there and talk. And when I'm talking, I feel like a, like a king. I like it and, you see, it's like real for me. Our dear brothers there, the memory be clean, and that it has defeated to buy our hearts in grave and our only kingdom. Vulnerability, emotion, um, these kinds of very important intrinsic processes that have to happen for healing don't necessarily occur naturally in incarcerated spaces. In fact, um, it is vulnerability that becomes a weakness. I like to act, I like to talk a lot. It feels like when, I, when, I am, when I'm in front of people, it feels like I want to be more than just that. I want to be something bigger than that. <laughs> My heart is beating because it's in front of people. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know if I must laugh or be a... I don't know what to do. What this work does is that it provides a vehicle for a thorough intrinsic investigation and heartfelt tugging and pulling within the heartstrings, within the same environment where the response is not, hey, you little weakling, let me fuck you up. The response is, man, you're a good actor. I didn't expect that of you. That was an amazing thing that you just done. And so the bravery of this kind of internal reworking and working within the self is rewarded in a way that theatre rewards it. Through a round of applause, through acknowledgement, and also somehow the impact of how this can subliminally change not just the individual, but the audience witnessing it, which includes warders, which includes the social workers, which includes people that will be living and working in the spaces that would never have recognized uh, these kinds of, of traits with these individuals. My dream is not to be an artist. I actually take part in it because I, it's one of my talents and I'm very good at graffiti. But what I want to be is I want to be an aeroplane engineer one day. My dream is to be a plumber. Either an artist, if I can't get that right, I want to be a plumber. If I can't get that right, then I want to be an engineer. My dream is to see me out of South Africa to be a chef. You see, because to be a chef is like, uh, I like it. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the ceilings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. On Sunday, it will be a first in our history. A first in our history where an incarcerated Hamlet will be performed publicly. And for me, it's as though the imagination and the through line of William Shakespeare's spirit and his work, in a sense, is finally anchoring home. We are finally beginning to take ownership of a language which will demystify and allowing this beautiful language which we speak as well to begin to heal. Yes, it's very tough, but everyone always gets the chance to change. But I think for me, this is the best, best place to get change and chances. And I got chances, a lot of chances, and I did use it, try and try again and again, until now I've changed. Coming from drugs and criminals, shopliftings, robberies, house breakings, but I'm done with that stuff now. I see a lot of change in my life.
Take your time, Beatrice. Time be gone. And now, my cousin, my nephew, my son. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. <laughs> move on, move on. I feel like a host of blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have Corrupt. sex and then I pulled Crap, up. but it's nice. <laughs> to come to terms with themselves. To find a place where they are able to embrace the darkest demon and angel simultaneously. And through that process, find a healing way. The main goal of this program is to utilize theater as a vehicle for these young men in incarcerated spaces